Hey Internet, today I want to talk to you about the test version of an add-on that I'm releasing for Blender 2.8. But before I get into it, uh, I just wanted to stop and say a big thank you to Antonio Vasquez. Uh, the work I'm doing is kind of an extension of Antonio's Measure It tools for adding dimensions and annotations to your Blender scene. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to Antonio for uh, all the work that he does on Blender and for releasing these tools under open source licenses so that other people can, can take them and edit them and mess around with them. So thanks. So this test add-on that I'm releasing is to draw dimensions, line work, and annotations into the 3D scene uh, in 3D space. So let's jump into Blender and take a look. All right, so let's get into actually installing the add-on. So you can get it from the GitHub repository right here, uh, which I'll put a link to in the description. And if you just come down to the bottom here, uh, you can download the Measure at Arc version 01 zip as well as the application template. And once you've got those downloaded, just head over to Blender. This is Blender 2.8 and just go Edit, Preferences. Under the Add-ons tab here, click Install. Find where you downloaded that zip file and double-click on it. You can search Measure at Arc and just hit the little checkbox here to enable it. So if you want to install the application template, come to File, Install Application Template, find where you downloaded that uh, application template zip file, and if you double-click on it, it'll install it. And then when you come to File, New, you should see this Measure at Arc option. So when you open up the application template, what you're going to see is the standard Blender startup file, but you've also got the Measure at Arc toolbar here on the side, as well as some styles. Uh, and if you just hit Show here, you'll see our default cube with some nice line work on it. And this is, can be a, a fast way to start up a project, since you've got your dimension styles already configured at the side here. But today, just to get uh, familiar with the tools, we're going to start right from scratch. And what we're going to be creating is just a little bit of a cube like this uh, with some nice colorful line work and some dimensions that will adapt to the size and an annotation there. And we're also going to take a quick look at what this might look like uh, in something a little more architectural. Okay, so with our new scene, uh, we're just going to hit N to bring up the UI here. And we'll head over to the Measure at Arc panel and just hit Show to get everything showing. And we'll start out with some lines. So let's tab into edit mode on the cube and select everything. And we're going to hit lines. And what you see right away is over in the object properties here is you've got this nice little line display here. And we can hop, hop into the settings. Uh, this piece here is going to change the line weight. This is going to change our line color. So let's go with something about three for these lines. And let's, the Z offset is a bit tricky. Um, but what that does is if you see here right at the edges, the lines are a bit jagged. Uh, let's change this to black so you can see it a little better. We've got these jagged lines. That's because about half of the line is actually inside of the cube so that you're not seeing it. So what we want to do is just shift that a little bit towards us. So we're going to set that to about one. And that's just going to shift those lines towards us on the axis of the view. So we'll set that Z offset to 1, our line weight at 3. And let's pick a nice color here. Um, let's just get a nice, uh, nice pinkish red going. All right, so that looks all right. But A, we want to see some, some hidden lines in the back there. And then we also want a nice silhouette around the outside. So for hidden lines, all we have to do is hit this little checkbox here, uh, draw hidden lines, and there we go. You can see we've already started to get some hidden lines. And first we're just going to copy and paste this color down so that they're drawing at the same color. And we can up the line weight to about 2. And then the dash scale, so a higher number is going to make smaller dashes, lower number is going to make bigger dashes. Uh, so let's leave that at something around 19 for now. And there we go. We've got a cube with a nice hidden lines. Now the next part is the silhouettes. So for that, we're just going to go back into edit mode, make a new line group, and you'll see that show up at the bottom here. And this one, we're going to come into the settings. We're going to crank our line weight all the way up to 10, grab our color, and copy and paste it down. And so that's, that's nice thick lines like we want, but we want these to be drawing behind everything. So what we're going to do is hit this Outlines toggle here, and that's going to tell it that we want these things to be 
behind our objects and then we're just going to put this z offset up to about three and now instead of moving those lines forward it's going to shift them back and now we've got a nice silhouette on our cube and we're in the EV render engine right now so if we just hop into rendered mode maybe change this to a sun lamp and then change our world color a little bit and there we go so now we've got our cube drawing pretty nicely but we want to add some dimensions so let's tab back into edit mode uh, select the points that we want uh, to dimension and the first thing we're going to do is set our view plane and what that's going to do is tell the dimensions where they should be placed so for these ones they're on the top of the cube we want them to be placed to be read in plan view so we're going to come to the xy plane here and select that and that's referring to these two axes so the axes defined by the x and the y here so once that's set if we hit aligned what we should see is two new dimensions popping in and we also want to do this edge down the side here uh, so for that one we want that to be viewed on the xz plane so we're going to change that to XZ, and there we go. Pops in exactly where we want it. Now, to edit all of these dimensions and make them get the right color, we could copy and paste all of our settings here and do that for each individual one. But what we're going to do instead is create a style. So if we come into the Scene tab, come down to Styles, we're going to hit Add Style and add a Dimension Style. And we're going to paste our color in there, name this something like Dimension Style. And if we wanted, we could pick a font for this. Um, so if we come into where all our fonts are installed in our system, I'm just going to grab um, Courier New. There we go. And Courier New Bold. So we've got a nice custom font. Uh, view plane, we're going to leave uh, just blank and just use our, our dimension defaults. Line weight, we're going to put at 2. Font size, let's make 8. Uh, resolution, we can just leave at 150, and all the rest should be fine. Uh, unfortunately, these alignment position and the arrow sizes aren't working in this version, uh, still being added. So that's great, we've got our style, so let's go back to our dimensions. And we're just going to hit this link icon, and that's going to tell the dimension that we want it to be pulling its information from a style. And we're just going to set them all to dimension style. There we go. And now, if we change anything about this style, all three of those dimensions are going to change together. And you can set up styles for, uh, for line groups, for annotations, anything you want. Okay, so now that we've got our dimensions set up, let's add an annotation. Actually, before we do that, let's set up a style for it. So let's add an annotation style. And give it our nice color there. And for this, I'm going to pick another font here. Let's go with Roboto. Go with some Roboto bold. There we go. Uh, line weight, let's do 2. Resolution 150 size can be 8 and left and top are fine for this so now we can use this style selection oh, let's give it a name first so now we can use this style drop down menu here and what this is going to do is tell measure at arc what style to use when you create a new dimension or annotation or line group so now it knows that we want to use our annotation style select the corner that we want to add the annotation to and add an annotation and you'll see it comes in right away with the right color uh, and with the right font so we might want to adjust the placement of that a little bit so let's go back to our object properties find our annotations here at the top there we go come down to the settings let's zero out the offset so it goes right at the corner and we're gonna bring it out on the x-axis and you know what? We might change that to be right aligned instead of left aligned. So let's go back into our style. Set that to right alignment. There we go. Come back and we're just going to rotate that 
by 90 degrees on the x-axis so that it's sticking up there. And let's just uh, give it some text. So, hello world. And there we go. Okay, so one other feature that Measure at Arc has is this line by crease option. And we're just going to demo this on this object over here. And you can see uh, it's just a cube with sort of a beveled edge here and a cutout hole through the middle. And you can see that it would be kind of a pain um, if we wanted to select all of the edges that we wanted to have line work manually uh, and add them in. And you can imagine, you know, as objects get even more complex, that gets to be a more and more time consuming task. So, what line by crease does is it lets you uh, set a crease angle and anything that is sharper than that gets a line added to it. So let's set this to 80 degrees. So anything sharper than 80 degrees will get line work added to it. And if we hit OK, we can see that our lines are just on those sharp edges. And let's hop into the Object tab and bring the line weight up and the Z offset up just so we can see that a little better. So there we go. So none of those curved edges got line work applied to them, just like we wanted. All right, but how does this all come together um, on an architectural project? So I just threw together this little demo scene of this um, house that's kind of sticking out over the edge of a hill. Just a very quick massing model to, to demonstrate. Um, and you can see we've set up a set of styles here that are controlling um, all of our various line groups and dimension styles and annotations. So if we hit zero to go into our camera view, uh, we've just got a nice nice perspective view here. And I've just attached a couple cameras to different keyframes. So if we flip through, we can see a quick section and a quick plan. And one thing that's a bit interesting, if we come out of the camera view there, you can see as I flip through those camera frames, that certain dimensions and certain line styles are disappearing and reappearing. Now, for the dimensions, that's because dimensions will get associated with the active camera in the scene. So that, you know, it's the camera with the big black triangle on it here. You can set that in the, the scene properties. So our section camera, our plan camera, uh, or our perspective. And so those dimensions will only show up when that camera is the active camera. And that's really handy to, to stop your scene from getting totally cluttered. Again, depending on the view, you might want or not want certain things visible. So in our section here, you can see that we don't want those contour lines, um, but in our plan we do. And the way we're doing that is just through the keyframes here on the visibility of those settings. Yeah, so that's just a really quick look at how this might look in a larger scene. And if you're interested on in seeing how I set up uh, this quick little demo scene, I did record it as a time lapse, so I'll try and put that up uh, on the same channel here so you can take a look. All right, so that's it for this little introductory video to Measure at Arc. Um, if you'd like to know more, the full documentation is available on the GitHub release page, so you can check that out. This add-on is still very much in development, so if you do find any bugs or features that aren't working as expected, um, just let me know in the comments on this video or over on the GitHub issue tracker. And if you're an architect or somebody using Blender for um, anything related to architecture, I'd really appreciate your feedback. And finally, if you'd like to keep up to date with the add-on's development, um, you can either keep an eye on this channel or keep an eye on the GitHub page. Great, thanks for watching.